Welcome to a world where nothing is quite as it seems. Welcome to Fake Britain. It's just an ordinary house. It could be anywhere in the country, but this is a house that's filled with fakes, and you may not know it, but your home could be full of them too. During the series, we'll be investigating the criminals trying to get their hands on your cash by using forgeries, frauds, and fakery. And I'll be showing you how you can avoid being taken for a ride. The high-end fake designer handbags that could lose you hundreds of pounds. My money's gone. It's nearly £350, it's just gone. Designer handbags from the likes of Louis Vuitton and Mulberry can sell for hundreds or thousands of pounds. And I think most of us are familiar with the kind of cheap knockoff copies that you can sometimes find down the market for a couple of quid. But recently, the fakers have upped their game and they're now producing bags that not only look like the real thing, but can sell for nearly as much. As you might expect from the fake Britain house, all of these are fakes. And as you're about to find out, they've been deceiving unsuspecting customers left, right and centre. It's dusk in Ealing, West London. Private investigator Dave McKelvey has joined forces with Ealing Trading Standards in a major operation to round up a gang of handbag fakers. The police and trading standards are en route with us to the unit. Uh, the actual suspect is currently inside the unit, so we'll catch him, hopefully, red-handed. When Dave arrives at the storage unit, it's already a hive of activity. Apparently, the faker is somewhere nearby. That's the suspect vehicle, the train stands and police have just uh, gone to the, the vehicle. They soon find the suspects and secure them. And it doesn't take long for Dave and Trading Standards Officer Tariq to find what they're looking for. We're not just talking a few fake bags here. As you can see, the whole unit is full of counterfeit bags. These designer bags are copies of their very exclusive genuine counterparts. A bag like that would cost in the region of uh, upwards of £2,000. And yes, they might be fake, but they're also very good quality. This is a Hermes bag, which is, a, again, a very expensive brand. And it's made it identical to the genuine article. You could fool someone into believing they... Uh, they were paying for that and paying genuine money for it. It's a who's who of luxury handbag designers. Chanel. Ugg. Dior. With the Dior, Christian Dior symbols. Dave really knows his handbags. And Tarek is no slouch either. As you can see, I mean, he's got... £267, whatever. Is he, was he passing them off for that much? 267 quid, so they're not being sold down the market for a tenner. How do they do that? Well, by faking the paperwork, too. All with the correct certificates inside. These are bags that would cost you in excess of £500, £1,000, £2,000, some of them. And um, they're being sold on auction sites as genuine items, so people are being defrauded of their, of their hard-earned cash. So, at first sight, it seems like a great result, and Dave thinks he can put a figure on the fake haul. This is a, a substantial CG, and you've probably got well over a million pounds worth of stock here. It's also not too hard to find out where these fake bags have come from. Brace yourself, this could come as a surprise. This stuff has come in from China. They've tried to, to hide the, uh, the details here, but you can see it's... These are the original the bags that the, the goods come in. As far as Dave's concerned, these fakers aren't just small-time criminals. You've got an entire organised criminal network here uh, of people who are involved in high-end uh, counterfeit goods, making probably huge sums of money. And in Dave's experience, the criminal activity doesn't have to end with trademark infringement. The counterfeit trade is worth billions upon billions, and that money goes into organised crime, which then breeds drugs, terrorism. 
You've got child labour involved in the actual manufacture and a host of other criminal offences. With a bit of digging, Tarek's discovering just how ingenious the fakers are when it comes to sneaking their gear into Britain. You open it up and it's just uh, an ordinary bag, no trademark on there, nothing whatsoever. So if that was being imported, customs officers happen to look at it, they'll think, oh, well, it's just a bag, no trademarks, put it through. But when you actually open the bag up, the fake counterfeit bags are inside. As you can see, Louis Vuitton. That's what you call the old bag inside the bag trick. But as the team are finding out, the fakers are also going for the bag in the back of the van trick. As you can see, um, the whole van is going to be full of counterfeit goods in the same way as we've just seen the storage units full of counterfeit goods. Between the storage facility and the van, the fake bags just keep coming. Trading standards feel they have enough evidence. This is a summons, which I'm serving on you now, for a series of offences under the Trademarks Act. Make sure you appear. If you don't appear, the court will issue a warrant for your arrest. Do you understand? It's been a case of handbags at twilight. These men are now swapping their fake handbags for a very real set of handcuffs. And these come with all the correct paperwork. It's now clear that the team has found a vast quantity of fake bags. So, time to recalculate the true value of the haul. Initially, we thought there was about a couple of million pounds worth of stuff, but after going through the whole uh, seizure today from the unit and the van, well, I think I'll give it an estimate around about seven to eight million pounds worth of uh, stock has been seized. And they all have to be bagged, tagged, and taken off the streets for good. Coming up, we meet the woman who lost hundreds of pounds of her hard-earned cash when she fell for a fake designer handbag. My money is gone. It's nearly 350 pounds. It's just gone. Earlier, we saw how private investigators and trading standards are closing in on the high-end designer handbag fakers. But high-quality fake handbags are slipping through the net, and they're costing the unwitting customers who buy them a lot of cash. Lisa Spira from Streatham in South London is a self-confessed handbag addict. I love shopping during my spare time. <laughs> She's happy when she's holding a designer handbag. And by saving up her hard-earned wages, she's built up quite an exclusive collection. This is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull GM Grande. This is another Louis Vuitton collection. This is Gucci. They call it the Boston. All these bags, I'm like a maniac every night or whenever I have free time, I just keep looking online, you know. Even if I can see the picture of the bag, it just makes me happy. <laughs> They're really special to me. Maybe some people think I'm crazy, but that is me. Don't listen to them, Lisa. It's your money, you can do what you want with it. Lisa earns an average wage and saves hard for her passion. I'm working as a customer service in Carries, PC World. Well, I'm not rich, I'm not a millionaire, you know, I'm not a posh person, but um, I save a lot for the bag that I want to buy. When Mulberry unveiled their new handbag, the Daria Satchel, Lisa was immediately hooked, but the price made her think twice. It's, it's a really, really nice bag, and I, I really, really want that bag. But that bag, like, um, if you buy in Marbury, will cost, like, £795. Not to be dissuaded, Lisa knew that sometimes there were deals to be had on the internet, especially from people looking to sell second-hand designer handbags. Eventually, she found what she was looking for. I've sent email to the seller, and she said, oh, yes, it's genuine, I've got it from uh, blah, blah, blah. So I asked her if she got the receipt. She said, well, she thought she would never sell it, so she threw away the receipt or something like that. 
so I trust her. Lisa believed the seller's story. She'd been saving hard, so went ahead and bought the bag. While the price of the second-hand bag was reduced, it was still a hefty £350, because designer bags have a big following and sell for hundreds of pounds in shops.